This is George from Tech Legion. You know, for a long time, Top Flow Cooling was really the choice of enthusiasts, and it was really the only game in town. But of course, that fell to the wayside, fell out of favor with enthusiasts who went to tower coolers instead, which typically offered better performance, but also had a much taller form factor. Now we're seeing a huge shift towards small form factor computing once again, which is bringing back Top Flow Coolers and the need for enthusiast class Top Flow Coolers. So, be Quiet is answering the call of two new pieces, their top of the line enthusiast class Dark Rock TF, as well as their mainstream line Shadow Rock LP, which is a low profile top down cooler with a 120 millimeter fan. Now, getting our first look at the Dark Rock TF, if you're unfamiliar with Be Quiet's naming scheme, the Dark series is their Enthusiast series, with the Shadow being Mainstream, and the Pure series being their uh, more budget series, shall we say. Now, the Dark Rock TF, obviously, part of the Enthusiast series, 220 watt TDP, don't want to dwell on the box. Typical Be Quiet black box, nice picture on the front, but there are a couple specs, you know, we do want to see here. Uh, the Dark Rock TF stands 130.8 millimeters tall, weighs 810 grams. It is a substantial cooler, you know, for especially for a top flow. We're so used to, you know, these days seeing the really small top flows. This is not one of them, as you see here. Very, very substantial dual fan cooler, also dual tower cooler. Now it uses 135 millimeter um, Silent Wings fans. Be Quiet has used the 135 millimeter on really all their Dark Rock products with great success. Uh, including the Power Supplies as well as the Dark Rock Pro 3, the Dark Rock 3 and Dark Rock 2 and uh, Dark Rock Pro 2. I uh, use a six pole configuration in the fan, so very, very smooth, very, very little vibration and really dead silent fans. 1400 RPMs a piece, capable each of 67.8 CFM and each is rated at 20.8 dB with an overall rating of 26.7 dB for the entire setup. So the two fans going through the um, two Heatsink uh, fin arrays, I should say, is going to top out at 26.7 dB according to Be Quiet's in house testing. Now, let's uh, break it down and get a closer look at the components here. Now, first off, in these days of Windows cases and really showy cases, one of the things you can say about the uh, Shadow Rock TF, or I should say Dark Rock TF, is that it's a really good looking cooler. There's not a bad angle on it as you go through. Very, very finely done. You've got the black end cap with the heat pipe caps. You've got all black nickel finish through the fins, through the pipes, as you see here, as well as on the copper base. So really fabulous looking cooler. A little Be Quiet logo also on the uh, bottom fin array, which is actually a pretty substantial array. And we'll get a closer look at that. So overall, you know, really a great looking cooler. Also, I want to point out uh, on the bottom, absolute mirror finish on that uh, dark nickel on the CPU contact block. So you're gonna get absolutely the best contact you can possibly get on the uh, CPU itself. So better contact, better heat transfer. So taking a look at the components. Uh, Be Quiet, the, as I say, Silent Wings, 135 millimeter. Obviously with the Be Quiet um, grooves in the fins that we've seen so many times. Really nice looking fans, incredibly silent. Um, the ratings on them really aren't a lie. They look like a misprint, but Be Quiet's actually very stringent in their testing, so you don't get exaggerated numbers uh, whenever you're looking at their ratings on their fans. So very smooth, very, very quiet, like I say. Also have an incredibly low startup speed. We were actually getting these to start up using PWM at about 325 RPM. So you want to talk about dead silence. I mean, you can't hear them whatsoever. Even in the case, uh, with them ramped up to 1400 RPM, we were still, you know, barely above room ambience. So this is one of the quietest coolers you're going to use. So I think say good looking fans, but now you also might notice, well, there's no vibration dampening on them whatsoever. That's because it's already built onto the tower itself. As you can see, two rubber plates right on the side, uh, on top and bottom, going to do all the vibration dampening for you. Now let's take a look at the tower. Very, very substantial piece. Now when you're looking at it as a top down, you say, wow, it's a big top down. But you know, you look at it this way, it's not really far off from most of the dual towers we see available these days. And you know, it really does perform like one. First off, really good looking piece, very substantial secondary uh, fin array down the bottom. And that's important. You've got the six, six millimeter heat pipes, like I say, all done in the black nickel. And four of them actually wrap around into that second uh, array of fins with the Be Quiet logo on the side, as I said. And you know, you get great performance as a result. It's a very, very nice design. Makes good use of the space 
that is allotted. And at only 130.8 millimeters tall, you're getting a lot of cooling power packed into a very, very small um, amount of space. So you really have a lot to work with here, you know, as far as cooling power without taking up a ton of room in your case. And there really isn't a bad angle on this cooler. It's a really good looking cooler in the case, you know, as we're going to see. So really just a fabulous job by Be Quiet, even the back uh, done with the black nickel. So like I say, not a bad angle on it. Great looking cooler, fabulous construction, uh, great attention to detail on it. And you know, that's something we've come to expect from Be Quiet and they certainly pulled through here. So now we've gotten a look at it, took a look at the features. So now we're gonna get it in the case and see exactly how it does. The Dark Rock Top Flow uses the same install kit uh, that all of the Dark Rock products use and most of the Shadow Rocks do as well. That probably just made a lot of people cringe. Uh, I've never seen so many comments uh, before, you know, that I've gotten with, oh my god, this thing's impossible to install. And it's really not. Uh, looking into it, I, you know, dug around for a bit because I was getting all these comments and I never really had any problems with it. And I found out the manual's just, uh, to put it nicely, not very clear on a couple of steps. And, you know, I'm going to start with that step that the manual actually tends to not be clear on. Now, if you're doing an Intel install on the 1150 series uh, or 1366 or 775, that's where people are running into the problems. Now, if you're doing an AMD, uh, AMD install, as you'll notice, you'll put your retention bracket simply on there, two small screws on each side, and your retention brackets will be on. But in the case of the Intel, there is a step that needs to be done first. Uh, first off, you notice that it is stepped out. Now, from the side that actually uh, would be closer to you, you need to take, there's a little two-part nuts. You need to go in. There are three pronged, of course, for 775, 1150 series, um, 1366. Choose the appropriate slot. Put the small threaded side through there. Then around the other side, take the cap, tighten it up, and put that in place. You want these on before you ever put it on the cooler, before it goes into the case. You know, um, I've seen many, many people, reviewers also, you know, who couldn't follow the manual, because like I say, it's not well written, who were trying to put these on after, you know, while they were putting the cooler in the case or putting, trying to put it together as a nut, you know, to tighten it down on top and trying to get under it with this little wrench. And that's not the way it's done at all. So like I say, this is a huge step right here. And get both your retention brackets prepped prior to putting them on the cooler itself. So now once we've got that done and they're snugged up, this little wrench, we never see it again. Now we'll put it into place and you notice the bow out faces down, in this case up, but towards the CPU itself. And yes, I do drop things once in a while, we all do. Okay. Put your two screws in, don't over tighten. You just want them snug. And the cooler is ready to go in. That's all your prep work on the cooler itself. Back plate, you can do this now, you can do this when the back plate is against the motherboard. Screws working from the flat side, you've got the padded side also which goes against the motherboard. From the flat side you can put your screws into place and they will actually be held by the foam. And of course do it for the appropriate socket that you're going to be working with. Once again, these are notched. So if you're doing the Intel or the AMD, put them into place and we're ready to put the cooler into the case. Okay, now moving on to the case. First step, I'm gonna put the back plate into place. If you're doing AMD, obviously it goes up and down. If you're doing an Intel, it will go wide ways. 
Notch outs are necessary, obviously, for the CPU socket on an Intel. And obviously when you put it into place, you see the four screws come through. Now these screws have a notch right next to the motherboard, and a small black clip is going to go into place. Slide it right next to it, click it right into place. This is going to hold the four screws while you're mounting the cooler itself. Okay, so the back plate is held in place, screws are held in place. We're going to take our cooler. As you see, we've got the four nuts already on the cooler. There's no tightening down of nuts anywhere. And we're simply going to put it, lay them on top of the screws, and from the back, turn the screws into the nuts. And of course you want to get your first screw started, just a few turns, and work your way around. And you don't want to tighten them all the way, you just want to get them all started. And then do your standard snug down in a diagonal pattern. They do have a stop point, so when you're turning the screw and you feel the stop, just simply stop turning and it is completely tightened. Don't continue tightening, as it will not make the cooler any tighter, you simply strip the screw. And with the final snug, we're done. Only thing left to do Plug in the fans into the CPU header. And we're all set. Then, of course, you know, tuck away your wires any way you like. You do have to be a little bit careful with the tuck because you do have that bottom fan, so you don't want the uh, wiring heading into there and rubbing against the fan. So, when you're all done, the Dark Rock Top Flow, really good looking cooler. You've got a good amount um, of space here for RAM um, behind the fan here. So you're not getting going to get any block of uh, RAM slots, really. Uh, I'm going to say you've got a good uh, probably 65 millimeters there without a problem. So you are going to be able to get some taller RAM under there without too much of a problem. Uh, it is shorter, as we say, so you don't get the you know, gigantic look, and you've got the nice look of the Be Quiet fan right out in the front. So all in all, not a bad install at all. As long as you take the time to put those nuts onto the uh, standoffs prior to putting it on, it goes in very, very quickly, as you see. And just a quick top-down look. You get a look at the clearance uh, between the Shadow Rock top flow and the RAM itself. You've got a good amount of room there. Taking a look at the performance results, obviously a stock clock CPU isn't going to be a challenge to any of these coolers that uh, we have here today. All handle it quite well. Performance is pretty much the same throughout the lineup. One thing to look at though, the uh, Dark Rock TF and only 31 dB is the quietest uh, cooler that we do have in the lineup today. Now, we're going to bump it up to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.21 volts. Now typically we see the top flows uh, wilt a bit except for the NHC 14 under these conditions and the Dark Rock TF keeps up with the NHC 14 and is actually a bit quieter. 
uh, just a couple degrees off from the Noctua NHD 15 or the Corsair H100i and just worlds quieter than the uh, H100i, obviously, and, you know, a little bit quieter than the NHD 15. Uh, Be Quiet really strikes an, uh, an impressive balance here between cooling prowess and quiet. You know, um, obviously with some louder fans, a little bit more airflow, you could probably bump the, those numbers down a couple degrees, but you know, you don't want something louder. So really, like I say, fabulous balance between top-notch performance and really, really quiet performance. So for a lot of years, the top-down segment was pretty much completely ignored. Plus you had the Noctua NHC 14 uh, floating around, which looked like it was gonna be impossible to beat in a top-down cooler. But now uh, the Dark Rock TF, really um, steps up the game quite a bit. Now, it does cool as well as the NHC 14, cools almost as well as an NHD 15 or 14, um, or, you know, Cryo Rig R1, the other top cooler on our charts. So you're only a couple degrees off from there, so you're getting the cooling performance. Now, in comparison with the NHC 14, it's a little bit quieter. Also, it's got a much more palatable color scheme for most builds. So I don't think there's really any question that the Dark Rock TF is gonna get a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award here. I mean, the cooling was outstanding, much more than we expected. Uh, really, you know, as far as a $75 cooler, it's one of the top um, performing pieces out there, regardless of whether it's a top down or whether it's um, a tower cooler. So you've got a really great uh, performing piece here regardless of form factor. Now, if you are going into a small form factor, you can't beat it. One thing I do want to point out, yes, it's 130.8 millimeters tall. However, keep in mind, you need at least 100 millimeters on top of it. You're going to need clearance of at least 141 millimeters, 140, 141, to make sure that it's not going to be air starved and it's getting proper air circulation. But overall, I mean, it's a fabulous looking cooler, fantastic performance, dead quiet. What more could you ask for? Uh, easy enough to put in as long as you follow the instructions, you know, as I said. And, um, you know, obviously going to be the top choice for me, as far as I'm concerned, in a top-down cooler um, at any price point and comes in at a very reasonable price point and is going home with a High Tech Legion Editor's Choice Award and our highest recommendation.